just like I got myself an oil leak. It's a pretty common thing on these and it leaks out of the wiring for the rectifier. So in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about fixing it and what it's like to do. Right, under the bike here, that there is the rectifier. And that multi-plug there is where the oil leak comes from. The oil actually travels down the wires, through the middle of the wires, and leaks out into that plug and onto the floor. Right, before I go any further, just a quick disclaimer. It's not a good idea to taste things to find out what they are. That can be quite dangerous. But I grew up and did my apprenticeship in the 80s, before everybody was wrapped in cotton wool and before political correctness got too f***ing out of hand. So, don't do what I do. Oh, and there's a safety video. I'll put a link to the safety video in the description as well, in case you see me doing stuff which is unsafe. Anyway, back to the oil leak. So what's happening is, inside here are your alternator windings, and that's the wire there for them, which runs down here and goes to the rectifier under the bike. And the oil forces its way through the actual wires along the copper and out into the multi-plug and it drips out. So what we need to do is we need to get this bit off with the alternator windings in and we need to seal the wires in here. So first thing we need to do is get this cover off which is held on by four eight mil bolts, two at the top, two at the bottom. There you've got your ex expansion bottle and whatever that's held onto. And then you can see the wire there. The only thing is there's another little wire going under there which so I can't get enough slack to pull this off. So these three nuts need undoing to get the bottle off. They're on the longest studs in the world. So then the expansion bottle should just slide off. The reason I take it off is so I can get to this little bolt behind here with hold this cover on. You probably could do it without taking that off, but... There's another little bolt around here. Another one at the bottom here. It's a little bit tricky because that pipe's in the way, but you can get there. Lie that out of the way, and then there's probably enough slack to actually get this off there. But the problem is this wire here. So what you need to do is undo this wiring cover here. The only trouble is <laughs> this cover's in the way of that bolt, and the chain is in the way of this cover. So ideally you need to take the chain off, then take that cover off, and then get that bolt out. I'm not actually going to take this one off of the bike. I've, I've got one on the other motor which I'm going to do. But when you're doing this on the bike, you also need to... The brake lever is actually in the way of getting this casing off, so the brake lever's got to come off. The easiest way to do that is them two big Allen key bolts down there and that whole housing will move to one side. Just be careful of your brake lines and stuff. And now that'll get that out of the way. And that's your wire, what goes down to your rectifier. So you can actually unplug that the other end. Mine originally actually went under this bolt which holds the engine in and the plug won't come out of there. So you may find that you need to take that engine mounting bolt all the way out. That goes all the way through to the other side and slides out this way. And when you put it back in, there's an adjustable sleeve, what goes through the frame. There's, I've spoke a little bit about them on when I installed this motor. So if you want to know about how these bolts work, go and have a look at my video of installing the HP motor. Right, I've just noticed something here. Well, I've just worked something out here. The actual wires for the stator will fit in this plastic housing and actually go upwards and then come back round down here to the stator. 
So the gravity, because normally it's here, and the gravity makes the oil run down and drip out of old mate, the rectifier whatever is down there. But if you run it up here, it's got to go uphill, so it's a lot less likely to leak. The only trouble is, the wire is not long enough to actually fit on a rectifier probably, but what could be done is these wires could be lengthened or even an actual patch lead with that plug on the end and a male plug to fit in this one. So let's get this cover off, it's just a case of undoing the bolts and it should come off. I've actually got this motor out because this is my original bobber motor. This is a motor which I'm supercharging and I've got to take this off and replace this casing with the supercharger belt drive casing. And I have to take the alternator windings out of this so I'm going to fix it all leak at the same time. You don't have to undo that bit. Let's put them safely there. And you may have to go around with a rubber mallet just to free the edges off a little bit. And then it should just pull off. And there is a gap here, you can actually get a screwdriver in to leave it a little bit. But be careful doing that sort of thing, you don't want to stick it in there and actually damage the casing. It's a little bit tricky to get off because it's actually on dowels and there's a great big magnet pulling it back on as well. So if you put a screwdriver in things like this, be very, very careful. A little dowel here it's stuck on. And then it should slide off. But it's a bit tricky because this is a magnet which is actually pulling it back on. And there's your alternator windings. And these are the culprits here. These wires. And this wire here is the tricky bit which goes behind this wiring cover here. So this is why it's ideal to get all this cover and the chain and everything off so you can actually get this off. Because otherwise you're only sort of pulling it like that and you have to work with it like that. But that, that's doable I think. So this gasket around the outside will actually rip. See, so you need to get yourself a new gasket for the alternator cover. And the bolts are actually done up at 10 Newton meters when you put it back together. So it's worth investing in a little torque wrench so you can do that sort of thing. So now I'm gonna get the winding out and that little sensor, whatever that is there. That little bit holds them wires down there too. Let's get them undone. They're tight. Got thread lock on them, I reckon. I really need to get myself some new bits to fit in the ratchet. My five mils missing. That's why I'm using an Allen key. Which isn't the easiest. Be nice to use a ratchet instead. That's a real tight one. That one. We'll come back to that later, he may get a bit looser if I leave him for a while. I don't think that's how it works. No, it's no looser. <sighs> come on, you. There you go. And that should all, once that rubber grommet comes out, gasket on it there. There, that's your, that's your alternator windings. I believe that when you actually take your bike to Triumph for them to repair this oil leak, this is the bit they replace, which is pretty expensive and there's a lot of labour to do it. So that's why I'm going to show you how to do it without replacing it. And also I believe that most people seal these wires up at this end. I think they pull these plugs out and then put sealer on the end of these wires so it stops the oil from coming out of the wires but I'm going to try and get to this end so it doesn't go up the wires but looking at that 
I'm not going to be able to get into these wires to seal them there. So we're going to make another plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal the wires this end because I don't think I can get into all this to seal them, seal them that end. So you can actually do this with everything still on the bike. You've just got to unplug this from the rectifier and do it on the bike. So what we need to do is we need to get this little yellow bit out. I just lever that up there like that. Don't think you need to pull it right out, but we're going to pull that right out. And then, I don't know how well you can see in there, but we need to lift that little, it's a little tagger there. Lift that little tag up and push down on the terminal and that will push it out. That will come out like that, look. And what we need to do is we need to get into that in there and seal that up because the oil comes out of the, the wiring there and leaks out here. These wires, I don't think it matters what way, what order they're in in this plug, but it's a good idea just to mark them just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean everything down first though with some degreaser so it's not all greasy. Try to get this in so you can see what I'm doing with the camera. Flip that little tag up and then push the terminal down. And they pull out like that. So now we're going to use this stuff. Some Permatex Ultra Black. And we're going to seal these up. Before I get involved in sealing these ends and getting black goo everywhere and making everything messy, I'm going to actually lengthen these wires so that I can actually run it over the top of the gearbox so that the oil has to be fed upwards rather than just down along because I'm sure gravity doesn't help it. So we're going to lengthen these wires. So I'm going to cut the insulation open here. So we'll do them one at a time. Let's do this one first. There's several ways you can do this. You can actually use crimp connectors like that and if you want you can put heat shrink over it that makes a really nice job actually or you can solder them and you can actually get some crimp connectors like this which have actually got heat shrink around them and glue inside them so you crimp them on and then you heat them up and it shrinks the outside and it melts the glue inside and actually makes a really good seal and they are really good so how much wire do we want how much longer do we want it we want it that long i reckon calculations are right. It's a bit soft that wire for that. Let's use that. These are really good. You've got to get them right though otherwise you can chop bits of wire off. Right, I'll show you how you can solder this. There's several ways to do it. You can actually splice the wires together like that and then solder it. That's really strong, that works really well. Let's try that. You need your soldering iron nice and hot for this sort of size wire. And then we'll lay him on there. You can hopefully see that all right. I want to get that solder fed all the way in there and that will seal it from oil coming through. And that's a really strong solder joint. But the beauty of doing it like this also is it melts this plastic here which actually will help seal the wires. I don't know how well it will seal it and actually soldering it, if you get the solder all the way through this oil's not going to leak through that either. 
so it's not going to come out the other end. It may leak out here, maybe, I'm not sure. But what we'll do is we'll put seal around this, we'll put sealer all around this joint as well. And that should work pretty good. And of course, solder up the other end. I'll show you how I'll show you how I do solder a lot of wires. Instead of doing it like we just did it, what I'll do is get the camera in focus. And then I just tin both the sock, tin both bits of wire. In similar fashion. Just let the solder get fed into it like that. That's nice and shiny. Pull that end away. Solder get fed into that there too. These wires are probably a bit thick to be doing it this method. And then all you do is just hold them together like that. That also works very well. It doesn't look like it does, but I've never ever had one come apart. But the best way to do it is like that, and it's a lot neater as well. And then to finish it off nice and neat, get some heat shrink tubing. Slide it over the other end. And then heat that up with a hot air gun. Nice and neat, but what we'll do with the other end is before I put a heat shrink on it, I'm going to put the RTV sealer on it to actually seal the wire up internally a little bit before I do that. And when you do the other end, remember to put your heat shrink tubing on first and slide it out of the way so it doesn't get hot when you solder it. I think it helps if you've got three pairs of hands doing this sort of stuff as well. But you can get little clamps and things and stuff to hold all this stuff while you're doing this. This one's not coming out so neat. And before I put heat shrink on this one, I'm going to put this sealer on there. The ultra black. It's gooey, thick. Right, I'm going to make sure that's totally sealed. Then I'm going to let that dry and then put a heat shrink over the top of it. I don't think that will go off if I put a heat shrink on first. So to seal this end, once you've washed these down with degreaser and let them dry, you've got to be really clean, then we can just fill all these wires up with the sealer. We get it right in where them wires come out because we don't want any any of this to get past here and leak out. Seal it all the way around so there's no escape for oil. And that's that's the easy quick fix to do it like that. You can do that while it's still on the bike. But the oil will still be in the wire there. So there, that's the end of the wire sealed. Right, so I've lengthened them wires to solder both ends so the oil's not going to get through the middle and then that end it's sealed as well and this bit is going to be above the gearbox anyway, this bit here so gravity is going to struggle with gravity as well so hopefully this will sort it out but I think even just sealing this end sorts it out anyway so it should be good Right, so that's that then I've got a longer lead on it, which goes over the gearbox now, so hopefully gravity will help stop the oil from leaking, as well as the sealed ends and stuff. I'm probably going to make a shorter video just about sealing this end, because this video is quite long-winded, and you probably don't need to go through that amount of trouble. So, there you go. I don't know if it's going to work yet or not. It's going to have to be on the bike for a while, and it's not going on for a little while yet. So... Let me know what you reckon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and comment. And of course, have a great day.